you are charged with facilitating debate, encouraging democracy, and holding the COP together during a pandemic. It is alleged that you proceeded to express solidarity with the previous leader of the Labour Party and asked that the party's rules be applied fairly and consistently across the membership. Hello and welcome to the SOS Socialist Secretary Takeover. I'm Alison, Secretary of Windsor CLP and I'll be your host this evening. Firstly, I would like to thank the team at the Socialist Think Tank for giving us this opportunity. We've got an interesting CLP secretary lineup for you this evening. We'll be talking to suspended secretaries, as well as some of those who are still trying to hang on to their jobs. Stay tuned to find out more about what SOS is doing to raise awareness about this terrible situation that we all find ourselves in. I would now like to hand over to Helen, who is going to give us some background information on what exactly is happening within the Labour Party. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Alison, our techie superwoman. Now for the science part. The Labour Party is run by the General Secretary, the big boss. CLP stands for Constituency Labour Party. Basically, these are the units for local organising of the Labour Party, and they're kind of fundamental in making sure Labour campaigns and wins in both local and general elections. CLPs engage with local members and hold meetings where members can discuss issues relating to the party. They're the place where members have the opportunity to voice their opinions and have a say on party policy. CLPs are run by CLP secretaries. They organise all the meetings, answer questions for members, keep the CLP working within the rules. So you have to know the rules, which takes just a little bit of time. Have you seen the rule book? You have to be available every day or you run the risk of, should we say, unpleasant correspondence from members who apparently think that this is all we do. After Keith, sorry, Keir became leader of the party in April, he put a new general secretary in place, David Evans. David is very different to the previous general secretary, Jenny Formby, and he seems to have a bit of an issue with CLPs. Since becoming General Secretary, Dave has slowly restricted the ability of CLPs to discuss any issues that he considers not competent business. Nobody really knows what this means or where the phrase comes from, but so it is. If a CLP discusses something that Dave doesn't like, it's more than likely that the CLP Secretary will get a letter from the Governance and Legal Unit, GLUE, suspending them because obviously the secretary is responsible for monitoring and limiting the right of members to discuss what they want. I say suspended members secretaries get a letter. That isn't always the case. In the recent spell of suspensions, secretaries have found out that they're suspended when they're unable to log in to party systems or when they run a membership report and find a suspended note next to their name. Being suspended means the secretary can't do their job and it is like a job, an unpaid job that takes up hours of time, a huge amount of effort and causes significant stress. Without a CLP secretary, the local party can't function, thereby limiting members' rights even further. Over the last six months, increasing numbers of CLP secretaries and officers have been suspended in most cases, there isn't a clear reason given for suspension. There's just a reference to some random rule, 2.1.8, that's a bit of a catch-all. In response to these suspensions and attacks on the rights and freedoms of members, CLP secretaries started to think about what could be done to challenge the suspensions. Oh, hey, Maya, good to see you. Can you tell us some more about Save Our Socialist campaign? How was I? Business. Oh! Ah! Oh, hi, Helen! 
Oh, you want to know more about Save Our Socialists? Well, so us CLP secretaries were pretty outraged when we heard about our colleagues getting suspended. So we decided to launch a campaign and within 24 hours we had a Facebook, a Twitter and a website. We wanted people to know a little bit about the secretaries who were being suspended, that they were hard-working, dedicated people and they did not deserve to be suspended. We knew it was going to be easy for them to be painted as bad apples. Ew. We've had some great endorsements so far and we're hoping to work with left groups in order to spread the word. We also wanted to show support for secretaries because it's sad and isolating to be suspended from your Labour community. <laughs> so a few, couple of our super lawyer secretaries put together some legal advice for suspended secretaries and guidance on what to do if you've been suspended. Woohoo! What are you doing? We've got some phonics to do. Anyway, that's all from me, Helen. Back to the studio. Home. At home. We're all at home. Thanks, Maya. Don't forget, all CLP secretaries are volunteers, and generally we balance this with our busy lives. Uh, it takes quite a lot of effort and skill to make time to complete our CLP secretary duties. So we apologise for the continuity issues in that last report. We're now going to have a quiz to see which CLP secretary knows the most about the recent suspensions. So joining me now are our contestants. They're all CLP secretaries and at the time of the show, they currently haven't been suspended. So we welcome Payman, Jessica and Rachel. Also, I'm joined by Angela, Susie and Helen from the SOS team. OK, so question one, how many CLPs have passed motions that resist the diktats of the general secretary? Is it about 40? 40 from Rachel. Any other guesses? 50. Four. 50 from Jessica. Payman, do you want to have a guess? Um, that we know of, I'm guessing. Yes. Because <laughs> that's He's the thing. He's this. adding them up in his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all lower? <laughs> it's just... I think it's got to be over 80 by now. The answer is 91 have passed motions resisting the diktat of the General Secretary. These include uh, reinstating Jeremy Corbyn, restoring the whip to Jeremy Corbyn, solidarity with Jeremy Corbyn, restore free speech to the party, a vote of no confidence in Keir Starmer and a vote of no confidence in David Evans. So 91 was the answer. So uh, payment, I think you're probably closest there. Well done. Question number two, in how many CLPs have officers been suspended where motions have passed that resist the diktats of the General Secretary? Given it's completely arbitrary, I'm going to guess about half of them. Okay, good guess. I'm going to go for 50 again. Okay. I'm going to go lower again, like <laughs> 20. Okay, yeah, the answer is 29. So uh, again, um, you know, this is where officers have been suspended following motions passed, resisting the diktat of the General Secretary. Again, these include reinstating Jeremy Corbyn, restoring the whip to Jeremy Corbyn, solidarity with Jeremy Corbyn, restoring free speech to the party, vote of no confidence in Keir Starmer, and a vote of no confidence in David Evans. So uh, well done. I think, Rachel, you were closest there. Question number three, how many CLP and branch officers have been suspended so far? 50. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be right eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else like to have a guess? Go 40. I think it is a bit lower. So the answer is 51 CLP and five branch officers suspended that we know about. So well done, uh, Jesse. Pretty much spot on there. Really good. The answer the total is 56. That includes branch officers as well. Um, so yes, and, and maybe by the time this show actually goes out, I expect that number might have increased, unfortunately. So. That is a lot. Do, do, I mean, do a you lot. not think as well that we possibly only know about like half of them? Because like a lo lot of people... I, I don't really know what the rule is, frankly, but a lot of people feel like or they're told that they can't even tell people they've been suspended. That's so true. 
there must That's be right. even more who mm. are not even you know like uh, over something that happens in their CLP and then also not not able to share it and must be a lonely place to be as well. Yes, that's right. That's why we're trying to spread the word with the Save Our Socialists and, you know, our Facebook page and encourage people to let us know so that, you know, we can uh, spread the word. But, yeah, I understand a lot of people probably don't even want to mention that they've been suspended. So uh, it's uh, like you said about payment, about people, you know, being a lonely place. That's the thing as well about, you know, this sort of Save Our Socialists in terms of supporting each other and being there for each other so that you know people aren't on their own but like you say people are scared um and so hopefully by doing this sort of thing and and talking about it people might feel like they can and uh, ask for support from from other people so question number four which region has suspended the most officers southwest West. Any other answers? Or do we concur with that? Southwest. Yeah. Yeah, there, the Southwest mm. region has suspended the most officers. Actually, they've suspended 20. So, out of the 56 that we know about, 36% uh, are in the Southwest region, which is outrageous, mm -hmm. really. So, I don't know what's going That's on right. down there, but it's uh, pretty bad. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed our quiz. I'm now going to hand over to Angela, who's going to interview our quiz contestants in their roles as CLP secretaries. And we're going to understand how they're feeling about uh, trying to keep hold of their secretary jobs and not be suspended. So I'm now going to hand over to Angela, who's going to talk to Payman, Rachel and Jesse. So welcome back to them as well. Thank you. So, Bye -bye. so, um, so some numbers just came up in that, um, in that quiz. And I wonder how you felt about hearing some of those numbers and um, you know, what, what that kind of means for us as socialist secretaries. Shall I go first? Um, I was really encouraged to hear the number of CLPs that have been prepared to fight back, to register that what they think you know that what what's happened to Jeremy Corbyn is wrong um, and that um, they don't think that um, freedom of speech in the Labour Party should be curtailed in the way that it has been so um, and they've managed to do that despite um, the succession of letters that we've had from the General Secretary that have made it quite clear you know, letter after letter that he doesn't really, and the current leadership doesn't really want us discussing that sort of thing and challenging um, the leadership on this issue. Um, but it, it is absolutely shocking how many um, officers have been suspended just for expressing a view about our very recent former leader and the fact that he's a Labour Party member, an MP, but he no longer has the whip um, and, you know, all the other things that we're not allowed to discuss anymore. And really to, to stop people being active members because they want political discussion is pretty outrageous. And I, I hope it will be resolved sooner rather than later because it, it doesn't bode well for our electoral prospects. The, the, the main thing people have been trying to do in passing a lot of motions is hold the party to account over its processes, right? So even before like there was this wave of suspension of secretaries, one of the main points that people were bringing up around uh, some of the issues that are raised is that, well, aren't we meant to have proper process? Didn't the EHRC just come and tell us one of the problems we've got in the party is that we don't have proper processes that people can trust and see that justice is done. And um, apart from anything else, that's really important to fight um, racism or uh, all the other issues that you know like these things are meant to help us deal with you need to have proper processes and be able to have faith in them and people were trying to hold the party to account over that and what's come out of that is even more travesty of processes where people get suspended for uh, indefinite periods pending investigation off the back of wanting to have discussions that according to the rules there's nothing that we can see is against mm. How do you think we got here? I think one of the things that I've realised is actually how little representation there is for CLPs within the party because we only have how many reps is it on the NEC? You know, basically, 
if the rest of the NEC decide for one reason or another to overrule something that the reps bring to the table, that's the end of the conversation. And I don't think that's right because we are, we are the party, the Labour members are the Labour party. Um, whilst I respect the fact we've got affiliated unions and socialist societies who you know, should be lockstep with us, um, it often seems to me that the travel, the, the direction of the party is, is somehow overshadowed by a lack of representation internally. Do you worry about being suspended? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a meeting last week um, with my executive committee and as ridiculous as this sounds, um, it was the first time that I actually spoke at any length about the suspensions across the party because um, being a Jewish member of the party, I've kind of got a lot of skin in the game at the moment. Um, and I was, I told them I'm genuinely about talking to them in a meeting because it seems to me that people can be suspended at the drop of a hat, even just from, you know, an allegation being made. And I don't think that's right either, but I also can't, I don't feel I can stay silent anymore about how eviscerating it's been for me to see lots and lots of comrades being suspended. I do think it's really important that you know, if we stay within the rule book and we're standing up for, you know, the best interests, for Labour Party values and the best interests of those we seek to represent, that we are able to speak out and stand tall um, because we're not doing anything wrong. And mm. um, in, the, in the long run, it is in the interests of our party and in the interests of the electorate as well, that we have an active you know, democratic, transformative Labour Party, because, you know, in, at the end of the day, we're trying to change the way the country is run. Yeah, I think, I think it's worth, like, I, in a, like, it, there are people who've kind of, like, dedicated so much of their lives to um, campaigning for Labour, working for the party as, like, the movement in the UK that represents working people and wanting to support that and like you know it effectively like to have to, to for people who've given their like so much of their life to it and then um it is their family and uh for, for, for so long and then to be suspended over something happens in their meetings that like nobody like and getting um from what we hear letters that don't even tell you what you've done wrong uh or give you any reason uh and as far as lots of people can see there's no reasonable reason for, for, for some of these cases like so to, to get that to be in that situation seems seems a horrible position to be put have you have you yeah. changed anything that you do um in the light of the of the risk of being suspended and jesse you, you said that maybe you had started speaking up so maybe you hadn't been before no, well, I have privately, um, and I, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very vocal about what I think amongst those people I know I can trust. Um, the people on this call, notwithstanding, um, but I think, I think that there is a, there's a real feeling of fear. Because as Payman says, people invest a huge amount of time, um, but they also invest an enormous amount of emotional energy um, as secretaries because of the responsibilities that come with the role. Can I just add as well, I think while I've got huge respect for those who have been prepared to sort of put their positions on the line to, to mm. be part of this fight back, I've also got massive respect for those who have, you know, taken a step back and chosen not to fight on this particular issue because it is yeah. so hard and I don't think um, anyone around the top table you know which is a, a parallel universe in my experience it sometimes um, has any idea of the sort of anxiety and um, uh, you know the workload that people are taking on how they're fitting it in with their jobs and their families and their caring responsibilities and their other volunteer roles and you know sometimes you just can't take any any more of the the nonsense but you you want to keep doing your best job and so you choose to fight on other issues yeah. and there's plenty to be fighting on at the moment so if, you know i think we 
you know, welcome everyone who is prepared to fight on these really key issues because they really do um, are setting the direction for the future of the party in the short term. But I think that, that you know, we, we also need to be fighting on all the policy issues um, with, you know, with this awful government and the lack of opposition that um, the current Labour leadership is providing to it. So there's, there's plenty of other things to fight on if, if people aren't able to fight on these more difficult terrain. But I think we still need to make sure we're offering our solidarity to all those members who are suspended and, and putting pressure on the NEC to get those um, cases resolved as quickly as possible. Because from what I can see there, I can't see any rule breach in what they've done. And therefore, we just need to make sure it isn't long grasped to the extent that people just walk away because, you know, who could blame them? Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's the... the one of the points that like i think rachel um made there was about people's names being cleared and i feel like one of the things that like, makes this like situation so much way heavily on people as well especially is effectively like the, the the nature of the accusation that's been made against people unofficially in a way because the point is uh what this is being talked about as part of is as a part of a zero tolerance of anti-semitism Yes. That's, that's the kind of label that people are putting on this, right? So effectively, yeah. what that leads people to say is that all these people who are being suspended are anti-Semitic. And to call people anti-Semitic for, uh, for example, you know, the threats of suspension have been for things like allowing yourself to be overruled by your local party or on a debate to go ahead and have a debate about whether the general secretary should be confirmed by a vote of conference. Like if that doesn't kind of like destroy the meaning of that word, like which is a really important thing to kind of keep hold of, like I, I don't know what it does. And like, like, and also just on the personal level of how people feel like being labeled like that when, you know, uh, like how heavy and serious a label that is. That is you know the, the pressure it puts to say well no I, I do need to clear my name of this it's mm. not and yeah how important that is not to just kind of like just be like okay well you know somebody comes you called me that and you know oh, well I'll just kind of get on with it like. so so thanks very much to our guests there very interesting debate and uh, back to Alison in her home studio Thank you for conducting that uh, very interesting interview, Angela and the team. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to uh, the weather report with Susie. Hello and welcome to your latest suspension update. Let's take a closer look at the southwest of England where we've seen gale force suspensions. The localised storms have been thundery in nature with 20 CLP officers feeling the pressure. Hold on to your hat, it really blows in the southeast. Thunderstorms in London have caused chaos across the capital with 12 officers struck down by lightning and the grassroots have been left a little shaky. Wales is cooler in parts, with widespread low pressure moving into the northwest. It's snow joke across Yorkshire and the Humber, where temperatures have plummeted, with eight officer suspensions and plenty of snowflakes. It's pretty frosty here in Leeds. Dry and bright weather across the northeastern Cumbria. No suspensions is canny like. Looking ahead, we will see low temperatures and moods across England over the next few weeks, with some little rays of sunshine. Unbelievably, we can see clear skies across Scotland, with a bright outlook and hopes of independence. Keep up to date with those suspension warnings through our website, and of course, follow us on social media. Thank 
you for your excellent weather report, Susie. Is it just me or is it getting hot in here? <laughs> so we're now going to hear from some of our suspended CLP secretaries. We've already heard from some that haven't yet been suspended, uh, but we're now going to talk to Esther, Alan and Susie on their experiences of being suspended from their roles as CLP secretaries. So Esther, do you want to start with how you were suspended? We'll yeah, so I, I, yeah, so I think I was one of the first suspended um, secretaries, though it did take a little while after the meeting. It, it was over a week. Um, and when we, we had the meeting on the 13th, Friday the 13th, so that was a bit of an omen, wasn't it? Um, and we didn't hear a thing. And, and we'd, um, we had a motion which is about asking for the reinstatement of Jeremy Corbyn on the basis that it was wrong and in the interest of party solidarity and of course it did turn out to be wrong but um, anyway the next weekend I went in to organise to try to send a communication to members and I found that I couldn't get in um, and I was told that um, access was denied which is very ominous and then I checked out with other secretary comrades and they're all saying no no it's fine I can get in all right so that was all a bit suspicious so then went through the weekend and on Monday both my chair and I had a letter which is about our membership status saying that we've been administratively suspended for reasons unknown um, so and then since then we've not been able to communicate with any of our CLP members which is really bad but yeah, oh, it's always a shock, even when you're expecting it, it's always a shock. Yeah, we were, if you want, in the second wave. So we knew that in Bristol, uh, a whole number of CLP officers had been suspended. But we thought Jeremy had been grossly unfairly treated. So we carried on with a motion that basically said, return Jeremy Corbyn to membership, uh, defend party democracy and uh, return the suspended members in places like Bristol. Um, oh, thank to, you. Solidarity. You know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And um, we, we thought at first, because Jeremy did get returned to membership, that we were okay. And then, of course, we got the second Evans letter. And um, a few days later, I got my suspension letter. Um, all very nice, telling me I could get help from uh, the the <laughs> you know, so it, it was lovely. It gave me a warm feeling that you know, slung out on my ear that I could consult people if it had damaged my mental health. So, ah, thank you very much. I walked in from the um, what you call it, the food bank, your know, well veiled uh, community hub. And um, you think we lost the red wall, and you're doing something that actually prevents us losing working class communities in the north. And you arrive home, and bang, you're suspended. And you just think, what you're playing at? What are you really playing at? Yeah, what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you were about the same time, Susie, were you? I think we were the same day, Alan. So, Matt. My chair and myself were uh, suspended by email exactly the same time, one fifteen, um, and we passed a motion to restore the whip after Jeremy was back in the party, so we thought that would be okay. Our meeting was on the same day as the email that said suddenly that wasn't allowed, um, but obviously there wasn't any more information and it was already on the agenda, so... Um, the meeting decided to take the motions and the meeting passed the motions so we passed one to restore the whip and we passed one with solidarity to young labour who were in a similar position as well earlier in the month so I think it took about two and a half weeks before we got our suspension letters though so we thought we were okay with that Yeah. yeah. Um, and the same as you we got a letter saying that we'd broken a rule and that was it. No evidence yeah. and yeah. no information. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't get an acknowledgement to to the SAR letter requesting the information that they hold on you. So that in itself is really worrying because there's no information on why you're suspended. There's no information on what the complaint is, what you've done. And the fact that they think they whatever it is that we've done is so bad that we need to be suspended from our volunteer roles 
Yeah, but the thing is, Susie, we know that people who've passed the same motion, because there's 91 CLPs that have passed motions um, for various things, which are dissenting from the General Secretary's guidelines, and only 29 of them have actually had suspensions. So it, I don't think it's anything we've done because others have done the same thing and not been suspended. It's just um, a kind of random or, or targeted application of bureaucratic diktat. Um, but we don't really know why it's been applied in the way that it is. And you can't help be suspicious that it's some of the safest and largest CLPs in the country and it's CLPs with some of the most consistently left-wing officers. Um, and those so, right-wing MPs. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're lucky we've got a socialist MP, but yeah, it's, okay. it's not the case when there's friction as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you do have to wonder, but we're all, I think the thing they have to say, we're all in the dark. Mm -hmm. And that is, oh. to me, totally against any process as a natural justice. And it does say that the, the it's not fit for purpose the way we do discipline in the Labour Party. Yeah, well, when we when we get our SARS, we should be able to see what's been said about us. Mm -hmm. So we might be able to work out where this is um, coming from. But, but but the other thing that I've said is that the, one of the reasons it's really horrible and stressful, as well as not being able to serve the people that have elected us, is the fact that you've got these faceless bureaucrats sending you stuff and you don't know who they are and you can't talk to them. You can't email them. You just get these kind of automated replies and it, it's all very Orwellian. Yeah, we felt in the way were we going to accept that we should keep quiet and should be seen as individually guilty. This was a collective response of solidarity for Jeremy and it's been a collective act of solidarity between us to say that we're all yeah. in the same because of the circumstances and we have to combine together. The notion that you quietly allow an individual, I don't know, intimidation is not acceptable. No, yeah. And how, how are you feeling, Susie, about it? Um, because it's you and your chair, isn't it? Like me, it's you, yeah. me and my chair. I think that makes it slightly it? easier, but... I was surprised because it was the last week of term and schools were really manic at that point. I was surprised at how stressful it was, just having people ask you questions and trying to be really careful about what you say, trying to deal yes. with emails that come in. Um, I didn't sleep very well for the first few days because it was busy at work and trying to process what's going on. Yeah, because you're still getting your, so your name, CRP secretary name is still on everybody's membership cards. and. When people come up for their renewal cards, the cards are still going up with our name and contact details on. So, yeah, people are still contacting us and it's really difficult to know what to do because you don't want to not answer people's queries and, and help them. And yet we're not allowed to perform our role. And we've not had any, nobody's told us how we need to deal with that. No. Well, have you yeah. had letters of affiliation at the moment as well? Yes. Yes, I've been passing them on to the treasurer um, because I can't really say anything. Yeah, what I don't like is that there's the sense that you're supposed to have done something wrong. I mean, I got asked by the Liverpool Echo to do an article, so I did one, um, and it's quite good because it does put across you, you get to put across your own view. But it's the sense that automatically there's a presumption of guilt. Mm. And people have been coming up to us in the street and at the food bank and saying, you know, what is it now? You know, all we see of you is getting stuck in to try and help people, like every other CLP officer in the country that's active yeah. and doing the right thing. And they're just saying, I, I don't get why a Labour Party would have a go at a Labour man. That's the, that's the thing no, that they keep saying. No, it makes no people. sense. No. Yeah. No. It's kind of embarrassing, you know? Yeah. You don't know what it's to say, do you? Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't really start going on about regional offices. And <laughs> I think it's quite embarrassing. You, you can't. <laughs> yeah, they say, what are you supposed to have done? And I say, mm, I can't really tell you because I've not been told. And they say, <laughs> yeah. what kind of way is that of proceeding? And you say, no way at all. But it, I'm not allowed yeah. to say anything else. <laughs> it, it, it totally undermines credibility for the party, doesn't it? It just, It's just, yeah, as you say, it's embarrassing. Mm. Yeah. What can you say? <laughs> My mum had a good question. She said, did you get suspended for writing the minutes? 
or why did you get suspended <laughs> for writing them in it? And it's a good question, really, isn't it? it yeah, well, it, it, essentially, you got suspended for doing your job. That that's what it comes down to. Because in our it, when we did our motion, we actually took a vote as to whether the motion should be heard or not. Yeah, we did. But it was kind well. of fifty-four to nineteen or something like that that the motion should be heard. And what were we going to do? <laughs> I think that's it. It's the the difference between our role. We have to follow the standing orders and the procedures that are in the rule book and in our standing orders. And so in order to do what the general secretary was asking, we would have to go against that, which would then create a really awful atmosphere in the meeting and create flashpoints where people are really frustrated and upset and are more likely to have a meeting that's really difficult and yeah. unwelcoming. Yeah, I mean, we did our, when we did our um, motions, um, we we didn't actually allow any discussion because we thought that the general secretary was saying that you couldn't discuss it. So yeah. we said that people couldn't discuss it and we just had the motion and then had the vote. We did exactly um, the same. But clearly that wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I, I think that's the thing that must be golden for some officers because, I mean, we voted 58 to 1 and we did have a discussion. There's other places that didn't even put the motion, that bent over backwards to do what the General Secretary said, and they've still been suspended. And that must make the people involved in that situation, where they actually played the game, feel absolutely devastated, I would have thought. Yeah, because they could have kind of, <laughs> could have pushed it harder, couldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They went really softly, softly, and they still got suspended. <laughs> I yeah. don't, I don't so, understand yeah. what they wanted from volunteers. I think the amount of pressure, and we did sign as secretaries and chairs sign a letter, didn't we, to the NEC and to the general right. secretary, pointing out that we're between a rock and a hard place because we can't, whichever way you go, you're either going to get the feedback from members or the feedback from the NEC or the general secretary or the leadership that you've done the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, 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 can, I can look myself in the mirror because, like, so, some CRP sectors who are really good people that I know took a huge grief off their members saying that they weren't standing up for the right thing. And it, you know that in their heart they did, but they tried to play what they thought was the, you know, the new rules, if you want. So they, they have been faced with suspensions and they faced the disapproval of the members that they represent and agree with. Mm-hmm. And I think that must be an awful situation. I mean, at least we don't feel morally compromised because we, we stood up and we stood by what the members said. <laughs> 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 well, it's, it's, it, kind of, it kind of highlights the existential crisis, doesn't it? Because um, we are, um, we're elected to serve. We're servants mm-hmm. of, of our CRP members, um, and, and yet um, Evans is writing to us and calling us leaders. Mm-hmm. We, we aren't leaders, we're servants. He's trying to turn it around uh, and trying to pit us against the members, and that's totally wrong in itself. Mm-hmm. I, I found that bit of the letter, I think it was the second letter, that said we've got to be passive condits of what the Labour leadership says moving down towards our members absolutely the inverse of the reality we're supposed yeah. to be if you're tribunes for our members taking exactly. our views the leadership and i i'll all stick by that you know i'm elected by these members in liverpool uh you two by leeds and by bristol and i mean we've got to represent our rank and file simple as yeah it, yeah it, it, exactly exactly that and um uh, I, I suppose that there's something that we should say to all of the other suspended officers as well um because the, the the reason that we've set up this campaign for save all socialists is is to aim for the reinstatement of all those suspended officers and also to offer moral um, support, solidarity to everybody and to make sure that what we do, we're not doing it alone. Yeah. And we have, and we've spoken out because there's been articles in Tribune, articles in yeah. Labour Briefing, there's been a momentum. Exactly. I mean, I think you've got to speak out and you've got to highlight what the issues are, you know, and I think I think we can say we've done that. Contact Save Our Socialists on info at saveoursocialists.co.uk. 
thank you very much. We really hope that you get the justice that you deserve and that you are brought back to the Labour Party in your CLP secretary roles as soon as possible. We need you back. So we're now going to be joined by the forensic analyst who is going to look, be looking into the suspension statistics for us. To protect the identity of this CLP secretary, they have decided to appear incognito. Oh, hello. I'm the forensic um, socialist and I thought I'd have a look at the data around the recent CLP officer suspensions, which is all very interesting. We know that at least 56 officers have been suspended from 29, at least 29 CLPs, but we also know that at least 91 CLPs have passed dissenting motions. So 62 CLPs haven't had anyone suspended at all. Well, that doesn't seem consistent and it doesn't seem fair. So I thought I'd have a little look at what might be going on. It doesn't seem to be anything to do with the sort of motion that's being passed because the unsuspended CLPs have passed exactly the same sort of motion as the suspended CLPs. No confidence in Evans, no confidence in Keith, reinstate Corbyn, solidarity with Corbyn and withdraw the guidance to CLPs. So why have the 29 been picked on? Perhaps it's a regional thing. Let's have a look. Perhaps it is. So we know that overall 32% of CLPs passing dissenting motions had their officers suspended. But as we shall see, the probability of having your officers suspended varies a great deal from one region to another. So we know that the South West had the most suspended officers, 20 out of the 56. But the South West passed only 14% of the motions. In the South West, the probability of being suspended for dissenting was 77%. And on the other hand, despite 12 dissenting motions in the North, no officers were suspended at all. They got away scot-free. Same in Scotland. Well, they only had two dissenting motions, but nevertheless, nobody's been suspended. The next most dangerous place to dissent, or the next two most dangerous places, are Yorkshire and Humber and East Midlands, where you had a 40% probability of being suspended, and all of the other regions came somewhere in between. So, what's going on with these regions? Do you think they've got a sort of league table going on? Um, do you think there are prizes for suspensions? Who knows? But I think it's definitely something to do with the regions. Um, well, let's see if we can find anything more out. Um, but that's all for now. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you very much to the forensic analyst. Very interesting statistics there. So we hope that you've enjoyed our show. We are almost at the end. To end our show, we wanted to share with you all a video that we've created to go with our anthem, It's Not About Us, which is performed and written by Rob Johnson. Rob also lent us one of his songs for our introduction, so we thank him very much for his support. This video shows some of our hardworking secretaries working on key issues that are brought about by society today. Issues such as food banks, homelessness, the plight of the Palestinians and fighting for democracy. Even more reason why we need to get all of our CLP secretaries reinstated. So we really hope that you enjoy this video and we look forward to your ongoing support of Save Our Socialists. Thank you very much. It's not about 
us. It's about the food banks. It's not about us. It's about the Palestinians. It's not about us. Phone in the Samaritans so we don't climb down. We don't shut up because it's not about us. It's not about us. It's about the homeless It's not about us It's about democracy It's not about us It's about solidarity So we don't back down And we don't shut up Cause it's not about us And it's not about you An unelected bureaucrat But the match girls and the miners hands that built the NHS and it's not about us it's about our children's children so we don't back down we don't shut up no we don't back down we don't shut up Cause it's not about us No we don't back down And we don't shut up Cause it's not about us